Now we're going to talk about anti-metabolites. So they basically interfere with the bacterial cell ability to form and process DNA. The problem that we have to think about, though, is that in general, they resemble chemotherapy agents. So when we look at the adverse effects, very often they resemble the adverse effects of chemotherapy, which may include basically signs that we're having rapid turnover of cells, that those cells are being affected, like GI mucosa and bone marrow. Specifically, those are the systems you have to worry about when you're talking about anti-metabolites. The first one we're going to talk about is Dapsone. Dapsone is similar to a sulfa drug. It's a uh, PABA analog. So, in other words, it inhibits dihydroteroid synthetase, which basically blocks the formation of folate in that whole process. So, what do we give it for? It's for leprosy and it's for pneumocystis pneumonia. But one thing that we have to worry about in terms of an adverse effect is that it puts oxidative stress on the cell. So in other words, somebody who is D6PD deficient, they can undergo hemolysis. And another thing that it can do is cause methemoglobinemia. So again, for methemoglobinemia, which you've learned in biochemistry, you give methylene blue or vitamin C to reverse the methemoglobinemia. The next anti-metabolite drug we're going to talk about are the sulfonamides. These include sulfamethoxazole, sulfasoxazole, and sulfadiazine. All of these together inhibit, just like we said before, dihydropteroate synthetase. These are drug of choice for simple UTIs. They're very often given with trimethoprim because they're synergistic together. Adverse effects we have to worry about. Allergies. Again, it puts oxidative stress in the cell, so we have to worry about hemolysis in people with G6PD. It can cause interstitial nephritis, photosensitivity, and it displaces other drugs off of albumin, which therefore increases their serum concentration. So that's another sort of drug-drug interaction that's not just at the level of the CYP inhibition or induction, but takes place at the level of albumin. So one thing we have to know about sulfonamides is that they can cause serum sickness if somebody is allergic to them. So just let's just remind ourselves that serum sickness is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, which means that there's immune complex deposition leading to widespread deposition of the complement cascade activation. So there's going to be fibrinoid necrosis and decreased levels of C3. So that's key for serum sickness. So we mentioned trimethoprim. Trimethoprim is an analog of methotrexate. It inhibits dihydrofolate reductase in, and it's synergistic with sulfa, so we give them together. And it causes basically bone marrow suppression. It's just like methotrexate in that regard. So one thing that we do to kind of help that is we give folate as well. When we talk about sulfa allergies, we have to know that not only sulfa drugs cause sulfa allergies, but a lot of different drugs have molecular similarity to the sulfa drugs, and therefore there's going to be cross-sensitivity between these different drugs. So we talk about the sulfa drugs, of course, in addition to everything that we spoke about already. We also have to know that thiazides, acetazolamide, furosemide, silicoxid, and probenicid, they all cross-react in people who have sulfa allergies. The next group of drugs we're going to talk about are the fluoroquinolones. Anything that has the word flox in the name, F-L-O-X, that's going to be a quinolone. They inhibit DNA gyrase, which is topoisomerase 2. That blocks the ability to synthesize new DNA for replication, as well as the ability to make mRNA for protein synthesis. Now, just like tetracyclines, we discussed that you couldn't take those with antacids and things like that for gut absorption. It's true also of quinolones. As far as the spectrum for quinolones go, they cover gram-negative, they do cover anaerobes. Adverse effects, they cause tendinitis, and they can cause tendon rupture at the insertion point. The next one we're going to talk about is metronidazole. Well, the way it works is it causes toxic metabolite buildup in the bacterial cells, which causes free radicals on the DNA, which then, you know, basically just blocks everything that the cell can do, and it kills the cell that way. The simple way to remember it is it's anaerobes below the diaphragm, and it works with things with flagella. So that's one of the things we've been discussing. So remember, we had clindamycin, which was anaerobes above the diaphragm, metronidazole, anaerobes below the diaphragm. So that's the yeah, spectrum. Another thing to remember is that 
it does cause a disulfiram reaction with alcohol, just like the cephalosporins might. And another thing that it can do is people might complain of a metallic taste. So if you get a question in step one, you know, if somebody comes in to you, they have some kind of bacterial infection, you sent them home on a drug, they came back two weeks later, the question will be, what was the most likely antibiotic given to this patient? You should know this is metronidazole.